In this video, we will show you how to use the OFX Global Currency Account PSD2 PISP APIs. This video is aimed at developers and should help developers build out apps which use those APIs. So as a developer, your first step would be to go to developer.ofx.com and there you will find documentation related to GCA Global Currency Account PISP. This page shows you how you would use those APIs, including registering with OFX, getting an access token, setting up payment consent, authorizing consent, setting up uh, invoking the payment flow, and getting payment details. So let's get started. The first step is to register with OFX. Like on the landing page, you'll find that there is a login and a register button on the top right. I've already gone through the registration process. So if you do that now, you can then log in and you'll land on a page similar to this. So we'll proceed now to create a new app. Give it an appropriate name. This demo app will do in this case. And we also need to provide a callback URL. This is a URL that will get calls back when the customer logs in but also when the customer completes the payment flow. For demo purposes, I'm just going to use a dummy URL, google.com. You also need to choose the appropriate product. So we're going to choose this PISP API product. And we're going to proceed to create the app. The next step will be to call into those APIs. To help streamline this process, what we should do is download the Postman collection at the bottom of the page. Once it is downloaded, it'll appear in your Postman and those APIs are ready for use. Let's also check on the state of our application that we just created. The app has been created, but some products associated with this application are in a pending status. The OFX team will need to complete the setup of this demo app for you, and we will wait until that is completed. Some time has passed, I've refreshed this page, and the app has been approved. So let's proceed. First step will be to get a token. And this step will require the client ID and client secret from the app that you created. So here we go, we'll grab this key. And we'll grab this secret. The URL will be the sandbox.api.ofx.com URL. So we send that request and it comes back with your PISP TPP access token. The next step will be to create a payment consent. This will use the token that was just generated along with currency you're using and the amount you're expecting the customer to pay. So let's send that request. The request has been sent, the consent has been created, and a consent ID has been returned. At this, phase, this step, we will require the customer to authorize that. And we need to construct a URL to do so. So what we'll do is we'll grab the consent ID that was just generated. We will enter in the redirect URI that was set up as part of our app setup. And we'll provide 
customer key as the client ID. As per usual, the sandbox API should be used for the host. Now this will return back a HTML page. So instead of running it in Postman, we're going to run it in a browser. And we are presented with a login screen. So this will be what the customer will be presented with and the customer will need to perform a login. So what login will we use? Well, let's go back to the portal documentation. And it has, it suggests an account to use, a test account. So let's use those details. And we'll perform a login. At this point, an MFA two-factor auth step would have been shown to you if this is a production environment, but as it is sandbox, that step has been disabled. And we're just requiring the customer to allow access to the PISP flow. Access has been granted and the callback URL has been invoked, in which case this is just the google.com URL that we're using for this demo. As part of that URL, an OAuth one-time use code was provided in the query string. And what we're going to do is call the API to exchange that one-time use code into an access token that you can use on behalf of the customer. So we'll call this authorization code endpoint, providing the auth code that was given to us. And as before, we'll need to copy and paste in the various details. So the key, it's your key, and secrets, along with the callback URL that was set up previously. And there you go, that is the access token and the refresh token that you can use to call APIs on behalf of your customers. So the URL that we're going to invoke next is to set up the payment flow screens. So this URL requires some details to be added in. And the first one, what we do is grab the callback URL. Next up, we need the consent ID. And we'll have to grab the token for the customer. And finally, the URL will require the host name at the, at the top. Now this will return back a HTML page. So instead of invoking it within Postman, what we're going to do is use the browser. And here we go. So the payment screen has now appeared. And what the screen will show is your banking details at the top, along with the amount that was set up as part of the payment consent. So 500 euro in this case. And this will be presented to the customer and the customer will need to then select which account they'd like to pay out of. There is an account. And shows the FX transaction details. Deal complete. So what will happen is the callback URL will be invoked again. In this case, the deal ID will be provided back to your servers. If you'd like, you can then use the get deal details endpoint, supplying the deal ID 